Hello everyone, my name is Michael McCann, and welcome to this tutorial on advanced materials in the Blender game engine. Just as the title states, this is advanced materials, so if you don't have a lot of experience texturing or using materials in Blender internal or the game engine, you should brush up on that first. For this example, I'm going to be creating this cobblestone street that has a reflective animated map that only affects part of the mesh. And in the second example, I'll be creating this metal pipe and adding some rust, and then limiting the reflectivity to only the outside of the mesh, or, or the borders. And I'll start by deleting my default cube and adding a plane. And I'll tab into edit mode and then unwrap. But before I do anything else, I'm going to do some work in GIMP. So I'll find the texture that I'm using for the street, which is this cobblestone texture that I got from CG Textures. And up here at the top I'll go to Colors, and then Desaturate, which will turn this into a black and white image. And then I'll go back to Colors and choose Posturize, which um, posturize sort of it, it limits the amount of colors that are on your image, so there won't be so many uh, variations of black and white. It'll it'll just be um, fewer fewer uh, values. So now when we go back to colors and choose brightness and contrast, uh, what I'm basically trying to do is just have all of the the stones completely white without a lot of that uh, little black speckly noise in it uh, but it looks like that didn't quite do it so I'm going to go to filters blur and then Gaussian blur and take it up to mm, just 10 and now if I do the brightness and contrast again that it got rid of all that little speckly noise Okay, so now I want to select my paintbrush and use the color white to just uh, create sort of a border around the entire image. And uh, it's kind of difficult to explain what I'm doing right now, but it'll make a lot more sense once I'm actually working with the nodes. Uh, so basically this is going to be the puddle, and uh, I want it to appear as though like some of the water is kind of leaking out into the cracks around it. So I'll change the color to black and use the fill tool to fill in some of these blocks. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Uh, one last time I want to go to filter and then blur and Gaussian blur because I'm going to be creating a normal map with this and uh, and if you don't blur it at least a little then you'll sometimes get these really jagged or pixelated edges. Alright so now I'm just going to export this and then go back into Blender. Okay, so now the very first thing I want to go to Cycles Render. And I want to set up my compositing screen a little differently. Um, I like to have uh, two 3D views at the top, one for the rendered view and then another window just to sort of move around in, in the 3D space. And then I like the UV image editor on the right hand side and the node editor on the left hand side. I'm just used to working that way, so I, it's, I almost feel uncomfortable if uh, <laughs> if it isn't set up just so. I'll uh, change my world lighting a little so we can uh, sort of see the plane better. And now I'll add a material to it, uh, but I don't want this diffuse shader. I want to switch it to ambient occlusion. Okay, so if I select the ambient occlusion shader and hit Control T, it applies a texture. And what I'm looking for is that texture that we just created in GIMP. Uh, 
But I actually don't want the texture plugged into the shader. I want it plugged into the displacement on the material output. And this does two things. It creates a little bit of a bump and the ambient occlusion shader sort of calculates or factors in a shadow, uh, which is a very cool thing about ambient occlusion shaders and cycles is that it does factor in normal maps uh, when it creates those little hints of shadows. So now I'm adding a math node and I'm going to set it to multiply and then the value slider will increase the depth but you see if you take it up too high like I mentioned earlier you'll get these sort of jagged or pixelated edges so you should definitely be careful about that even though I blurred it uh, if you take the value up too high you'll you'll still see it a little so I'm just selecting a value that that uh, kind of it looks good but doesn't show too much of that uh, that jagged edge okay so now I'm going to bake these textures so I'll just start by creating a new texture I'll just call it puddle normal and leave it at 1024 by 1024 now I'll just select this texture node and hit shift D to duplicate it when you bake in cycles you need the texture that you just created uh, assigned to an active node so that node needs to be sort of outlined in in yellow and that texture needs to be assigned to that node now I'll go to my render settings and go all the way to the bottom to bake and switch from combined to normal and then click bake and there's the normal map now I'll just save that image I'm keeping all of my textures in one folder. Okay, now I'll switch this from normal to ambient occlusion and I'll click bake again. Okay, and that bakes up that ambient occlusion shadow. So I'll save this one as well and just call it puddle AO. Okay, I think we're good. So we can switch over from Cycles to the game engine. And we're going to delete that material because Cycles materials don't work in the game engine. And we'll create a new one. And I'm going to set this up just like you would any material in, in Blender for the game engine that has a diffuse image and then uh, the normal map and the specularity map. So we'll add the normal right underneath. Here in image sampling, click normal map. Deselect color under diffuse and select uh, normal in geometry. Now I'm just adjusting the strength. And that looks decent. Now I'm adding a specularity map. Deselect under the diffuse settings the color and then select under specularity the color and the hardness not the intensity though uh, if you see What uh, let me just show you under your material settings if you have intensity selected you can't Control it with the slider anymore. It's uh, it's just going to be that specular and there's no way to change it but if you deselect this here and then go back to your material settings uh, now you have more control over how specular the thing the the mesh is all together. So because this is just a stone, you know, ground, I, I wouldn't want it to be too specular. So that that looks pretty good. All right, now I'm going to create a new material and I'm going to assign this one to the mesh, just to see what it looks like as we're you know creating it. And I'll add that ambient occlusion bake that we made in cycles. And I'll switch the blend from mix to multiply. And you can see that the, the color value goes up to one by default, but you can manually add a higher number to get a really dark edge. Now I'll add the normal map that we baked. And set this up the same way, normal map, uh, deselect color and select normal. 
uh, but you can see even if I move the light uh, really close to this plane, it's not overly obvious that this is a normal map because that ambient occlusion is uh, so dark now. It sort of it sort of hides the fact that there's some bump there. So the way that you can fix this is if you go to your materials and take the hardness under specularity all the way down to one. Now it's very obvious that there is some depth there. And that's what we want. So now I'll create another material and assign this one as well. And I'm going to add an image of a sky. Of course, you know, you would want uh, to be reflecting whatever your environment was. So, uh, you know, whatever your sky texture was, you know, you would want something similar, at least in color, uh, to, to be reflected in the water. And it's just sort of reflecting like a mirror now, but it'll it'll change. Um, right now I'm going to add an animated map, and I need to apologize because I, I know some of you might ask if I can, you know, uh, you know, make this available for download, but I can't. It, in fact, isn't mine. I found it pretty easily online, but I can't remember from where, and sadly I can't even credit the person who made it, um, which I hate doing that, but... Uh, you know, you can find these pretty easily online, so if you want to follow along with the tutorial, just, just do a quick search for them. Okay, so I'm going to open this image up in the UV image editor. And over here in my toolbar, I'm going to go down to Game Properties and select Animated and change the tile numbers to 10 on the X and 10 on the Y and then slide the end value all the way up. It'll only go to 99. There are in fact 100 frames, but because Blender, uh, the way Blender starts at, at zero, it calculates numbers by starting at zero, so there are in fact 100 frames, and it'll just go from zero to 99. Um, and now I'm just adjusting the speed. And right now there is a bug in Blender. If you can, if you can see that the uh, the UVs are a little stretched, and the way that you can fix it is, I can literally do anything. I can just maybe select this lamp and then hit Control Z to undo that. And when I do, it just unwraps properly. Uh, that bl that bug's been in Blender for quite a few versions now, and um, uh, it's one of those things I don't really want to bug Blender with because there's an easy enough you know fix for it. Okay, now I'll just set it up like a normal map. Now if I hit P to play, um, you can see that it's not really looking right. So what I need to do is I need to bump the animated map up above the texture that's reflecting it, and that way it sort of, uh, you know, interacts with that reflection. But right now the specularity is a little too hard. It's almost like a ref um, specular like the way candle wax would be specular. Uh, so the way I am going to fix this is uh, change the type from Cook Tor to Blin, and I'm going to take the hardness all the way up. You can see that re reflection is a little sharper. I'm also going to take the IOR factor all the way up to 10, and then I can just adjust the hardness to... Uh, to something that, that looks right. But I, I just want that reflection to be really sharp. And I think that looks a little lot better. It's always good to name your materials. It, it especially makes life easier in the node editor. Okay, I'm going, going to create a fourth material and just call this one nodes and assign it to the mesh. And now I can open up my node editor. And over here under the materials, there's this little tab, and you want to click that so that you can use the nodes. And in this first node, I'm going to select the first material that I made, which was the street. And I'll shift D to duplicate this node. And move it down below. And open up the, the puddle material. 
And now I can combine these by holding Alt and right mouse click and just drag them together. And that combines them with a mix RGB node. Now I want to type Shift A and go to Input Geometry and then Shift A again and Input Texture. Now I want to plug the, the UV into the vector of the texture node. And the texture that I want isn't in here anymore because we deleted that cycle's material, but it's the first, uh, the first texture that we used, the one that we created in GIMP. So I'm going to come over here to my textures and just import this into Blender. Okay. So now I want to assign it to this texture node and this will be the factor um, of these two materials. Uh, but you can see that they're around the wrong way, so I can just uh, switch these around. And now we have the start of uh, of of the puddle, um, and you can see now how you know it, it sort of runs through the cracks, which is a pretty cool effect. So if you're not very familiar with nodes, if you don't work with them very often or at all, you might not know how this image separated those two materials. Um, basically, Blender is looking at values of black and white to uh, to separate things. So there are two materials, and there's an image with two colors, and then you know that's how it's it's used as a uh, as as a factor. So I'll shift D this material node and open up that reflection material, and I'll combine it with uh, the the mix RGB again by holding alt and uh, right mouse click and just drag them together. Now I'm going to use that same texture as the the factor for this mix RGB as well. And of course that's you know backwards too so I just have to switch these nodes. Okay and there you have it but uh, what I don't like about the way that it is now is that the, the reflection comes right up to the border and you don't see that ambient occlusion or the, the bump map from the, uh, the puddle material that we created. So the way that we can solve that is by adding to this strand that's coming into this mix RGB node. We're going to hit Shift A and go to Converter and add a color ramp. And now these value sliders will uh, sort of, you know, determine uh, how large or high the puddle seems. So if I drag the black all the way in, it it comes sort of over those stones, and uh, and if I drag the white all the way back, it sort of recedes away from them, and you can start to see the. Uh, the ambient occlusion and, and that bump. But looking at it now, I think it looks a little too specular, or the, uh, the, the bump map for the puddle. So I'm just going to go over to that material because you can edit the materials in here and they'll, they'll uh, you know, show up in the nodes too. So if I take the specularity all the way down, all you see is that black border, which is the ambient occlusion. Um, so you want to see that, but I also want to see a little bit of the specularity too, just to show that there is, you know, of course, that depth there. And something like that looks pretty good. So now we can just give this a quick test and see what it looks like in the game engine. And it looks good. It's all working very well. Uh, one thing I would want to do, though, um, is right now the puddle looks a little too deep. 
uh, you know, if this were just a puddle on the ground, you would see some of that stone underneath. Um, and right now it just looks like, you know, it's a, it's a really deep hole filled with water. So this is a really easy fix. I'm just going to duplicate that first node, which was the street material, and then combine these two together. And then just uh, slide the value down so that it's mostly that uh, reflective material, um, but so that you can still see a little bit of the stone underneath. And yeah, and I'm happy with that. Okay, so now I can start on this metal material. Here I've just uh, modeled a really simple pipe to use as a, as a, uh, for a demonstration. I'll just unwrap this so that I can apply the textures to it. Okay, so this first material will just be, you know, basically the same like we did with the street. Uh, it's just going to be a, an image texture along with a normal map and then a specularity map. I know a lot of you in the comments have asked me to use the screencast keys add-on, uh, but that was actually removed from Blender in like 2.7. I, I can't remember, I read some literature on it about how it, I think it was buggy. I think it was causing some problems with the user interface in, in the newer versions of Blender. And I know that there is still uh, somewhere out there, there's a script that you can download and, and install it yourself. But you know when you're uh, when you're working with software that has a tendency to occasionally crash, you don't want to risk causing problems because there's really nothing worse than being in the final stretch of like a seven hour render and then just having Blender give up on you, uh, especially if it's because you you know senselessly uh, you know downloaded an add-on that's unstable. And that, I don't even really know what the consequence would be. I just I don't want to risk it. So, uh, but until then, I'll be adding in some important keystrokes just in the the video editing. Okay, so I'm going to add another material and just call this one rust. And I'm going to take the specularity all the way down because because rust is very dry and not specular at all, of course. Okay, and then one more material, and this one will be the reflection. And I'm just going to use that that same sky texture I used before with the with the uh, street. Okay. So this is all done. Uh, we can create our node material now and assign that. To open up that first material. And then shift D to duplicate it. And open up the rust and mix those together. Now input geometry and input texture, the same way we did before. Uh, but this time I'm going to import another texture. And this is just a grunge map that I got from CG Textures. There's a whole section of grunge maps. Um, and really, you only need an image that has, uh, you know, light and dark values with not a lot in between. Okay, so the color will be the factor and uh, the UV coordinates will be in the vector. And these colors are the wrong way around too, but we're going to add a color ramp. So instead of switching the nodes around um, like we did before, 
uh, we can just hit these two little arrows and that will flip the colors. So now I can use these sliders um, to sort of strengthen the contrast uh, between the metal and the rust. So if I sort of bring them uh, towards the middle to meet, you can see that it, it looks a little sharper. And that alone looks pretty cool because the, the metal material is specular and the, uh, the rust isn't. But we're going to uh, create another one which is going to be that, uh, that reflective material and to mix those. And the factor will go in there as well and we'll flip these around. Uh, but now you see that you can't really see the metal texture anymore. It's sort of a it's sort of being overridden by that heavy reflection. And what I want is just the reflection to be here on the edges. So the way to do that, uh, it's really easy. So just type Shift A, go to Vector, and add a Normal node. And then plug the Normal output of the Geometry node into the Normal input on the Normal node. And uh, I'm straighten up these nodes a little bit. Uh, I was going to duplicate that color ramp, but instead I'm just going to add a new one. So go Shift A and then Converter, Color Ramp. And then plug the dot value into it. Not, not the normal value, but the dot value. And now go Shift A, Color, Mix RGB, and plug both of the color ramps into it. And now instead of this one color ramp uh, being the factor, both of them will be, so. And now you can kind of see the metal uh, a little bit coming through that reflection. But the reflection is still sort of all over, so I'm just going to make some adjustments here on the, uh, on the color ramp. And then also on the Mix RGB, I want to switch that from Mix to Add. And now you can kind of see the effect. When you are looking straight at it, you can see the metal and the rust. And then along the edges, there's this tiny hint of reflection. And you can increase that uh, by adjusting the color ramp. Uh, but I think in this case, less is more, so I don't want it to be too strong. So just really quickly, I'll go in and add some uh, motion to this object so, th so that we can see it in the game engine. Now I'll zoom in a little more on it. Okay. So yeah, I think that looks pretty cool. Cool, actually. Uh, I think the only thing that I would do differently is um, maybe maybe add that normal map to the reflection material so that you can see a little bit of bump there on the edges as well. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and, and quickly do that. So select that reflection material and then select or add a new texture and just select that normal map and you can see it showing up there so I'll just set it up like the other normal maps and yeah I mean it, it's subtle but I think it I think it looks nice and you know what actually now that since we're doing it anyway and we're already here I think I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of bump to the rust and make it maybe look like it's a uh, you know set in lower than the uh, than the metal itself. Um, so I'll select the rust material. 
And I think I'm just going to go ahead and add that grunge texture that we used to separate the rust from the metal. And I'll just deselect the color and select normal. This isn't a normal map. Uh, you would probably want to use one, but just to show you by tweaking this, you can add a little bit of roughness to that, um, to that rust and, and give it a little bit more depth. All right, so that's the end of this thing, guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. And uh, if you did, you know, I'm always very grateful when people share these tutorials. So, you know, share and like and subscribe and all those things. And I uh, will see you next time. Thanks for watching.